The most important currency in today's business world is attention. Like how do I get people to understand nothing is more valuable than attention. In the past, it was gold and oil and things that you can dig out the ground. But now with technology and Facebook and Google and all these other companies, attention is the name of the game. So if you look at some of the top creators becoming billionaires, it's going to be Mr. Beast is probably the biggest example, right? Mr. Beast has these crazy videos where he just keeps reinvesting all the money he makes to make the videos even more crazier, which results in billions and billions of views. Now the views themselves, obviously they're going to make some money from ad revenue and whatever he gets paid on AdSense, right? But where the real money comes from and where that billion dollar value comes from is the products and services that he sells using his brand. This is going to be Mr. Beast Burger. He has a chocolate company. He even has a venture capital firm where he invests in other creators and other businesses as well. And all these things only work mainly because Mr. Beast has the attention. It's the same exact thing when it comes to Gary Vee. Gary Vee has an agency. He's got a million other different businesses. He's got an NFT project and it's all built on the back of his brand. So if you look at some other creators like Ryan Reynolds, The Rock, Kevin Hart, Justin Bieber, they all have businesses that surround their brand, but the key is they have to have the attention. Now, how does this apply to you? Well, if you are someone who is looking to build a business, one of the best ways to do it is to build your brand because that's something that can be built over time and consistently grow year after year. I started doing YouTube about three years ago, just talking about sales training, right? And in the beginning, you know, I was only getting like 50 views a video, but I just kept it consistent and video, 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 week after week until now I have over 100,000 subscribers and able to to monetize and make a full-time living off of that and even hire a team to help me out. And what's even crazier is that when we look at some of the fastest growing industries, for example, NFTs, a lot of people don't know, I actually have a whole separate YouTube channel called The Parallax, where I basically give people the updates on what's going on in the NFT market. And just from that audience alone, back when I had just 10,000 subscribers on that channel, I was able to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit just from NFT sales. And the reason why I was able to do that is one, obviously it's a growing market. The second is that I had the attention. So if you have attention, depending on who's watching you, you have the ability to monetize, right? So for example, Patrick Dang, the sales coach, sales consultant kind of person, the business person that you see on the Patrick Dang channel. Well, I sell a course, I have your attention and I'm able to generate revenue amongst other things like sponsorships and other things like that. And in the future, if I started any other businesses that kind of relate to things that I already talk about on my channels, it's going to be a natural transition for me to start that business and generate leads. For example, after I launched my NFT project and generated hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit, I actually started an NFT agency helping other brands, whether it's traditional brands or Web3 native brands, get into the space and properly launch their project. And even just from one client, that's literally tens of thousands of dollars just from one person, right? One of the most advantageous things you can do, especially if you're thinking in the long term, let's say, you know, 10 years, 20 years out, is having some kind of brand, whether it's a company brand or even a personal brand, because the personal brand is quite interesting because like, when you create it, you don't necessarily have to sell it. Nobody's going to really buy the Patrick Dang brand and I'm never going to sell it, right? But I can create other companies that are able to generate money and have a different name, but it's associated with my brand and I can sell that in the future, right? My NFT agency is called PLX Labs and essentially it's built on the back of my personality and my brand and what I've done in the NFT space so far. But the only reason for why this particular agency has clients is because they trust me as a person. So whoever has the attention can point that direction in any possible way to generate revenue. You can look at Logan Paul as a really good example. He's able to capture millions of people every single month on his podcast and some of his storytelling that he does on YouTube, which is actually pretty good, right? And how he's able to direct it is to create different brands around his lifestyle. So he's someone that's very athletic. He's been wrestling. He's in the WWE now. So obviously doing something like Prime Energy Drink is something super advantageous for him, right? Because it's a natural transition. It's a natural product that really fits his personality and the people that watch him. So when he makes a video about Prime Energy Drink and why it's better than Gatorade and all the other alternatives, it's going to get millions of views and it's going to generate millions of dollars in revenue as well. You know, 10 years ago, it was very difficult for a creator to make money. AdSense wasn't really a thing. Brand sponsorships were quite rare and not many people were spending on that. But because people are starting to realize influencer marketing is one of the most efficient ways to do marketing right now, whether you're a small creator with just 10,000 followers or you're a huge creator with over a million followers, you're able to monetize in some capacity, right? And if you just kind of think long term and have a clean reputation for decades to come, if, assuming you want to have a career like that, maybe you're doing okay with first 
first couple years, but then imagine that compounded over 10 years. How far can you get? What kind of businesses can you start? Because you built so much good equity with the people that trust you and watch you every single day. Now, a question that people have is, do I have to be an influencer in order to use this kind of strategy? Well, obviously, if you're on camera and you're able to speak, it helps a lot because right now the meta, meaning what gets a lot of attention is going to be videos, especially short form videos. I'm talking TikToks, YouTube shorts, Facebook has a short as well. So every platform is going to do short, right? Do you have to do it? No. But is it one of the best ways to create content at scale? Absolutely. If you don't create videos and you don't show your face, you're definitely at a disadvantage. But there are creators on YouTube who don't show their face. They kind of use maybe like a cartoon or anime picture or a 3D, but they're able to build an anonymous identity and brand over time. So it's not necessary to show your face. There are many different examples of people that are anonymous, but they're able to still generate income. This is especially true in crypto and NFTs, where a majority of people are actually actually undocks, meaning that you don't know who they are, you don't know their name, you don't know where they live. They're just like this anonymous personality, right? But they're still able to even generate millions of dollars of revenue, even if people don't actually know who they are. So if you are looking to build a personal brand, whether it's docs or anonymous, whatever the case is, what do you need to do to actually get started? My personal take is that you just need to start putting out content. And in the beginning, when you put out content, like for example, when I start YouTube, I put out a video, literally it would get 20 to 50 views. I would share it on my personal Facebook, share it everywhere I possibly can, and it would barely get any views. And I just kept doing that every single week to the point now when I post a video, I know for sure it's gonna get thousands of views, right? You know, long form is pretty hard to do, I would say, and that's how I started. But if you're starting in today's economy, I would actually recommend doing short form because it's much easier to do and it's, there's less commitment. And you can try stuff out without risking too much of your time. Just look at what already works, take inspiration from it, do it in your own unique style, and then just keep posting, 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 posting. And then eventually assuming your stuff is of quality or you're getting better every single time, you definitely should get some views and some traction. The only way you can really lose is really just giving up. I think if you keep posting for like, let's say a year, you definitely get some traction. For me, for example, when I did my YouTube channel, the one you're watching right now, I did it for an entire year and I think for that year I probably gained about 6,000 subscribers, probably less than 100,000 views for the entire channel for that year. And even still at that point, after a year, I was only still getting like a few hundred views per video even after that, right? Because in the B2B sales niche, it's much harder to generate views compared to if I did gaming, for example, right? I just kept it consistent to the point where now I become an authority when it comes to B2B sales. And every time you type in code email, business development, sales pitch, you're gonna find my face ranking at some of the top videos for these topics, right? And so it's all about consistency, putting out good work, and I would say the algorithm won't favor you until later on, especially on YouTube. Some of the videos that I've made three years ago, at that time, they barely got any views. But when I look at the views now, they'll be getting like 10 to 20,000 views per month. And it's like exponentially growing. The content obviously got better, but even back then, the content was already worthy of going viral, right? It was just that the YouTube algorithm wasn't pushing me quite yet. And so you have to put enough stuff out to feed the algorithm. Once the algorithm or maybe someone controls it, they're like, yep, this person is the one. They basically give you a boost from that point on your video videos will get recommended much more easily. Now, a lot of people might say, oh, is it too late to jump in? Is it too late to be a content creator? Absolutely not. Right now, in my personal take, the creator economy is just getting started. We're just scratching the surface of what's possible. If you want to be a YouTube creator, yeah, you know, there are certain niches that may be oversaturated, but there's different ways. You know, you can do TikTok, you can do YouTube shorts. Right now on YouTube shorts, I'm seeing like these creators come out of nowhere and they just grow a following. It could be anything. Like I'm an anime fan. I just watched like some anime YouTube shorts and like these guys are just like taking off after like one month of posting. So if you find the right niche and you find something that fits you and you can do it better than other people, then just get started. Then again, it's like more and more people are coming on the internet. Your parents are coming on the internet. My parents are watching YouTube, whereas like a few years ago, they didn't really know what YouTube was. So I think we're just getting started. It's not too late, but you just have to post. Just post something every week, once a week, something. And if you don't want to put in the time and you get discouraged when you get 20 views and it's over, that's really on you. But in general, from a macro perspective, the opportunity is there for everybody. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications and let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos about the creator economy marketing because that is directly tied to sales and I will see you in the next one.